but there's different ways of being anxious and nervous before a game. But I don't think that's pressure. I think pressure's a little bit of a selfish sensation. I'm not a, a huge believer. I know it does affect people, right? And it can affect me probably when I don't even realise it, you know, by some of the reactions. But I'm not a huge person that feels pressure. I'm someone who's very autocritical, so no one can sort of put a measure to me or that I haven't put on myself already. So I'm felt, I feel prepared that way around um, my assessing myself. A lot of it's based around how you feel yourself as opposed to the pressure of the game. Well, no, the game's the game. Like the, the more people there are watching and the bigger the occasion, the better. <laughs> like that, that's the most exciting thing for me that there is, you know, the bigger the, the occasion. And then sometimes even when it's a, there's not many people around watching, but it's the, it's the game you want to be at, it's, it's the same type of emotion that runs through you. Pressure is often just something that's been, uh, and it's been talked about more and more these days due to the advent of social media and the, I suppose, more uh, clickbait style of media that's out there. And so people feel their egos could get tarnished or their reputation or something like that. For me, it's not a huge thing, you know. I put myself under, I suppose, my own um, measure and to make sure I want the standards that I want to meet for myself. That's really what I've got to look for to judge myself on as opposed to feeling pressure. The pressure of the occasion, no, I think it's more excitement. Big games come, nerves come around, which is good, you know, some people feel them, some don't. They manifest themselves in different ways. Some people talk a lot, some people yawn. There's different ways of being anxious and nervous before a game, but I don't think that's pressure. I think pressure's a little bit of a selfish sensation, and I don't, don't really feel it around the game stuff. The times I have felt it, when I was at Stade Francais in France, we'd done some recruitment in the, after the first year, the ownership changed and uh, we had a, a space there where we'd done, we were guaranteed a certain amount um, of recruitment money, for example. We'd gone out recruited, people had come from overseas with their families or from other parts of France, moved clubs, and then there was a problem right before the start of the year financially. So we had a seven or eight day window where if someone didn't turn up with about 10 million euros to invest in the club, that we would be relegated to a federal level, which is amateur, and all the contracts will be null and, null and void. So that left people's livelihoods in limbo. And I didn't get a lot of help from the club at the time, and I was sort of handling it all. That, that would be a time I felt, feel like I would have felt pressure because other people's livelihoods were depending on it. I wasn't really in control I was, of the situation. I was just trying to manage it uh, as it was. And then also, I think the, the off-field stuff that came around the whole Israel Folau scenarios, you know, one, two and three, not as much the first one, but the, the second and third, they created uh, a certain amount of pressure that uh, I didn't like around my family and, and I didn't like the way it applied pressure on players inside of the team to have to start almost choosing about things that, that's got no right inside of a footy team to be choosing about. I felt like that was a time that pressure mounted a little bit just around the responses you gave because you didn't want to put your tread into a minefield where you know you rub someone up the wrong way or, or on another side on the wrong way with a comment that you don't even mean to be, you know, um, for one or another. So they're probably the, a couple of times that I've felt it a little bit and I've actually felt it physically, but more generally and, and pretty much 95% of the time, I'm not feeling that stuff at all because of the way I've tried to set my own um, working model up for myself. I think that that's a big part of what we do is making sure that players 
and staff don't feel that. So I think you've got to try and help educate, use your experience to try and give those people the opportunity not to feel that pressure, you know. Speed. There lots of things that in our world are very different to, I suppose, the business world or the corporate world around employment because, you know, you can get turfed tomorrow. And if I get turfed, uh, let's say, then the staff, there's a good chance a lot of them could go at the same time if a new person comes in, wants to bring their own. So you're always living with a bit of that. The rule is that when you do get involved in these teams, and that's that's part of it, you got to roll with those punches and you got to enjoy that, that those ups and downs and the possibilities that that could come at the end of any sort of tenure. But at the end of the day, once you deliver quality, um, whether you're a, a, a strength and conditioning coach or a, you're an administrator, whatever it is, if you deliver quality, you'll always get another opportunity somewhere else, even if that pressure comes to bear. So it's all about investing in your own, the quality of the work you do. Make yourself feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm going well here. And, and that gives you your confidence to then kick on no matter what the situation, whether it's improve inside your own organisation or take that, um, those skills and what you've learned, that experience and take it somewhere else.